Hi everyone, we're sitting here with Thomas Nelson Jr., the fourth grandson of Thomas Nelson, who our lovely school is named after. And we've spent uh, the course of the last two days touring Yorktown, getting a sense of really what Thomas Nelson's been all about, and uh, talking about uh, the Yes Movement. Tom, can you tell us a little bit about how you would like to frame it for uh, our future students and community members? Yes, sir. First of all, I am Thomas Page Nelson, Jr. I'm the fourth great-grandson of Thomas Nelson, Jr., who your school is named after. Uh, over the years, I've learned more and more about Thomas Nelson, and it's a great honor to have your principal visit me in Yorktown. Uh, just a little bit about, yes, I think it's very important to, to understand this positive attitude. Uh, I always say the, the, the half full. If you're half empty, you're not a yes person. But as a yes person, you have to think of the possibilities. Thomas Nelson, Jr., who was born on December 26, 1738, into a prominent family here in Yorktown, had a father who was president of the the House of Burgesses for a few years, plus many years as a member. His grandfather was Scotch Thomas Nelson, who came from England. At 19 years old, he came here and checked out Yorktown, came two years later, and then in 1705 settled here. And the house that we had visited earlier in the day was built by him, by craftsmen who came off ships. But they established a great wealth. At some point, he was one of the wealthiest men in the colonies, particularly those 56 who signed the Declaration of Independence. He was like the fourth wealth, wealthiest of all of it. And being a yes man, he was not, didn't follow the stream of normal people. Uh, for instance, when he came back from England, he spent eight years over there with education and all his friends were Tories. He was the only one of about ten who decided he is going to seek independence. A lot of that probably came from his father and his upbringing. He's a very religious man, very religious family. So, for instance, you recall Patrick Henry in his speech, Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death. Guess who was sitting behind him in the church? It was Thomas Nelson, Jr. And he jumped up when they were looking for a vote for a militia and basically said, If any British try to land on the shore, I will raise up an army of men and we will repel them. And, and we won't ask for permission. We're just going to do it. We're going to keep him from invading. So that was his attitude all through uh, his life. It only lasted 51 years, unfortunately. But imagine fighting the revolution. You had a lot of money. You came, became governor right after Thomas Jefferson. You had Tarleton, a British general, chasing him across the country, certainly willing to kill him. Uh, and he became the governor Right after Jefferson, he also became a brigadier general in charge of the militia, the army militia. A lot, and he also had poor health. But he was a well-to-do family, and he said yes to the whole situation. Imagine signing your name on the Declaration of Independence, knowing that if you were caught, you were hung, you were gone. So uh, he was a yes man all the way. And when, anyway, when he uh, went through his whole life, you can see the remainder of it and what happened. Uh, a great man, he gave entire wealth to for independence and died absolutely broke. And his family did survive because he had a strong set of children who looked after the mother. But we visited today the cemetery where he was buried. And you know, he didn't even have a, a monument to show where he was buried until around 1920. But as a great man, you have a school that's named after him. He was a great general. And... If you want to go in his directions as a leader, you need to be a yes man. And thank you very much for your time.